I'm Spencer Mazik, and joining me now is lawyer turned interior designer Nicole Lanteri. She is the founder of On My Agenda, an interior design company. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Spencer, for having me. So, Nicole, you have certainly done things on your own agenda. After practicing law for <laughs> five years, you're now an interior designer. So, can you tell us first, though, where did you practice law and what kind of law was it? Um, sure. Uh, right after law school, I practiced at um, Curtis Malay Prevo in New York. Um, and I started thinking I wanted to do international work. And I got connected with a partner and um, started doing hedge fund and private equity fund formation and really loved that. Um, and then he actually left for Aiken Gump um, about six months into my stay at Curtis Malay. Uh, so a few months later, I went over to Aiken Gump and um, worked in the New York office and the DC office. So what did you enjoy most about practice, if anything, Nicole? Oh, I loved um, practicing law and I loved being a lawyer. Um, it was exciting, uh, it was hard work. Um, I loved my clients, uh, and I loved a lot of the challenges that came with the practice. It was, you know, rigorous and um, exciting and many times fulfilling. Well, so if you loved practicing law, how did you arrive <laughs> at this very life-altering decision to leave law behind and become an interior designer? Uh, well, I started looking ahead and looking ahead to what my life would be like and, um, you know, I think I wanted to do things a little bit differently. Um, I knew I still wanted to work hard, but I needed to find, you know, maybe something not so different from law, but something that I could um, really uh, get into. Um, law wasn't really pushing me out, but something else was pulling me out of law, and, and I had to sort of figure out what that was. And, and that for you ended up being interior design. And now I know that you've said that in the it did. I know that you said that you know the decision wasn't as random as it seemed because you enjoyed art classes that you took in the past. You also enjoyed mm -hmm. you working at a framing shop that you did while you were in college. But did yeah. you have any actual design experience, background, or training before quitting your job? Um, I didn't, um, and uh, except for you know designing my own spaces and friends' spaces and and that kind of work, um, for whatever reason that part didn't really scare me. <laughs> um, I you know I'd gone to law school and and after you're a lawyer and you've gone to law school, you realize law school didn't do that much to to really train you for your everyday tasks. So I knew, you know, I was good at client management, I was good at problem solving, um, I was good at time management, and I thought, why don't I apply those skills to a subject matter that I could really get into and, and learn, um, and I wasn't intimidated by that aspect of it. So. Well, it, but it still must have taken a lot of courage and confidence, because as a self-taught designer, how did you know that people would even like your designs? I didn't, <laughs> um, and uh, you know, people always liked our apartments, and they always said they felt warm and like home. Um, so I, uh, I I took on one project for free, um, and it you know was through like a local listserv that a friend had found someone saying you know ISO local designer, and um, so I did it for free. I was very upfront about my story and that I had no experience, and if they were willing to go along, you know. With the ride uh, for the ride with me, then you know that would be amazing. And um, my first project uh, was amazing, and she came in for the final reveal, you know, just like HDTV sort of, and um, she cried. She was so happy. You did it for free, you said, and did she then later mm -hmm. pro provide a recommendation for your next client? How did you? She get did. My next client, yeah, my next client was the uh, across the street neighbor, um, <laughs> and we um, traded Pilates classes for design services. Um, she has her own business doing um, Pilates, you know, in-home Pilates instruction. Um, and then after that, it was another referral, and the third one was paid. And you know. That's probably like 50 clients ago. Yeah, so um, that's how you started. It so, started the process of you making yeah. money then. Was it, Nicole, yeah, did you yeah. go, tell me this though, did you go to law school uh, because it was the logical next step for you simply because you majored in political science and Latin American studies in college? Um, 
from the outside it looks like that, but I always knew I wanted to go to law school. Um, you know, from like my freshman year in high school, I think that was just one of my goals, and I knew it would lay the foundation for other careers. Um, I probably knew that law wasn't my last career or only career, um, and um, if I didn't do it right after college, I, I spent a year as a paralegal. If I didn't do it right after college, I knew I wouldn't do it later on, and I knew I wanted to um, to go do it, practice, you know, be independent, um, and have a career that would provide well for myself and uh, and be intellectually challenging. When did you have to worry about repaying student loans whenever you left the law firm? Was that a consideration before you changed jobs? Um, I was lucky. I um, as soon as I moved to Virginia after college, I uh, got my in-state residency, and uh, so I had in-state tuition for UVA for law school. So my law school loans, while significant, aren't you know as significant as they could be. Um, so we're paying them slowly but surely. So you're still working on paying them off then? Still working on paying them off, yep. <laughs> so Nicole, let's talk about your company on my agenda. What services sure. do you provide? Um, we uh, basically provide decorating services. In the beginning, I wasn't so sure, you know, what it would look like. Um, so I'd done some stationery for weddings. Um, I'd done a little party planning, and then I'd done some decorating. But now it's evolved into a full-service decorating firm. Um, I don't uh, do certain big projects. Um, I don't do kitchens, um, and we really focus on. Uh, providing a service for people who are busy. Um, they have kids, they have pets, they have a crazy life. Um, they live you know, in the D.C. area mostly, have an expensive house, and don't have time or you know, um, sometimes the ideas to make their spaces uh, really look great. I love how you say you don't do kitchen. It's kind of kitchens. It's kind of like how I <laughs> don't do floors. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you too about the e-decorating services that you provide. Uh, how, what is that okay. exactly? Is that where you provide design tips or decorating tips virtually? Yeah, and I actually haven't had um, that many clients for the e-decorating services. Most of them will be uh, local. I've had a couple clients in other states. Um, where we do, um, we work over email or video, you know, showing me the space. I show them the design plans. Um, even a lot of times in the local area, we work over email. So you don't necessarily need to have your designer, you know, in, uh, in your hometown um, to work with them, especially if you like their style and they fit your budget and they're easy to work with and responsive, then, then it really works well. And how much does it cost to employ your services? Nicole, are you affordable? I am affordable. Good. Um, that is my, uh, my main goal, is to be affordable. It's still not, um, um, you know, inexpensive, I guess, um, but it is affordable. Um, I base it on, uh, you know, the budget you have and uh, what you want your home to look like and we talk about money up front um, and sort of get it out of the way, but it, it drives the conversation and I never want anyone to be surprised um, by the bill at the end of the day. And so it sounds like it varies from person to person, per client, per client. It does. Um, I have a, you know, an hourly uh, rate depending on, on the project. Um, and then I also, I, I mostly charge flat fees. And I don't know if that stems from having to bill by the hour um, and then having clients surprised by the bill at the end of the month. But um, I find that it really helps clients budget for the entire project. And it also keeps our incentives aligned um, really well. So you know up front what my services will cost. I know what you can pay for the whole room and um, I source materials that fit within that budget and then we get it done. And do you still use any of your legal background and training when you're designing a space? I do. Um, you know, I think it's the similar principles when you start with a corporate transaction. Uh, you get all the information you can, uh, you send out a term sheet, uh, you get them to sign a contract, um, and then you really stay organized throughout the entire process. Um, and you know, you're responsive, 
and you give you know all the details you can and you keep asking questions and checking in and I think all of those skills make a good lawyer and, and they also make a good designer. I've seen some of your spaces oh, and I think they're pretty amazing. So where can people go if they want to check it out to see some of the work that you've done or if they want to hire you? Um, sure, you can go to my website at onmyagenda.com um, and you can link in there and see some projects I've done and um, you can see my Pinterest board which has some inspiration for current projects and you know future projects. Um, and uh, there's a design inquiry form where people can fill out you know what they want to do and what their budget is and their timing and um, inspiration. And so before we go Nicole can you give the viewers just a couple of quick decorating tips to help them spruce up their homes? Oh um, let's see uh, most of the spaces I deal with are small spaces or awkward spaces um, so I always say go vertical um, you know, if you have a pantry or a, a bedroom, you know, look up. You're, you're, there's a lot of space you're not using there. Um, and then have fun with it. Um, try things out. Uh, you know, change out the rug and don't be afraid. Um, it's only furniture. You, know, you, can, <laughs> you can return it. <laughs> um, and, and don't be afraid of color. Color can really add a lot. Um, and most importantly, you know, make your home happy and a place that feels like home for you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really yeah. appreciate it. Thanks for the tips, too. Thanks, Spencer. For more information on this or other topics, subscribe to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.